Octane Anime Action is the name of the game in Relic Night. Mount up in your mecha and battle for glory at our Relic Night Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Okay, now I'm at the stage where it's time to colour uh, our buildings red. Now, I'm going to be using stuff that I mentioned before called ghost tints. So, this is what they are. Uh, mini tear ghost tint. Uh, these are basically uh, sort of inks, but they have very nice properties and they go down very well for an, with an airbrush. So, what I'd like to do what I would like to do, sorry, my pronunciation is rubbish today. Um, I'm going to show you three of the colours, just neat straight out of the bottle. So the first one I'm going to show you is Fresh Blood, which is a very bright, vibrant red. And this one will help demonstrate what a ghost tint does. So if you look down here onto close cam, this is the red. Okay, I'll actually just move that up a bit. And that's just, that's just it, straight out of the bottle with a very thin coat. Now the way ghost tint works is the more you put it down, the richer and deeper the colour becomes. Now obviously the more layers you put down, the more vibrant that colour is going to become. Now, I need to quickly empty my airbrush. What I'm planning to do for these buildings is not quite the pure red straight up. I would like it to be a bit more of a rusty red colour, so more of a browny blacky red. And the way I want to do this is mix them. I'm then going to put a little bit of brown, uh, which is just called brown, so put a few drops of that in and let's see what the brown looks like. So next to the red. And that's what the brown does. So I'm thinking possibly a mixture of these two. However, it wouldn't be a fair test and it wouldn't be proper science if we weren't applying you know, another option. And for that other option, I'm thinking of oil discharge. So I haven't used it yet, so I think it's probably going to be either a very dark brown or potentially a black ink. So let's see if this is open. Uh, yes, it is. So a few drops of that into the airbrush and let's see what this does so that, there we go so this will be the black okay so checking these three colors out I'm kind of aiming towards a mixture of mostly red potentially with a little bit of brown in with it so that might be that might give me exactly what I need so there is no other better way to try it than just to do it so I'm going to quickly rinse the airbrush out here and I'm hoping this will give me a rich red rather than a bright red that's the theory so we'll see if it works all right, so let's just eliminate the black for now. So I'm going to put in some red and we'll mix it with maybe a three to one mix possibly of the brown. So let's try that out. I know this is the way I mix it, so. Okay, let's have a look at what the mix looks like. Joe, you know, that's not bad. It looks a little too briny, perhaps. So if I add a little bit more red, then I think we've got the mix that we're looking for. So let's add a bit more red. Because I can now fill the cup up and actually start working. 
So this is looking to be a 4 to 1 mix of the red and the brown together. And I think that's the mix that we're going to go with. So we'll just try this one more time. And if this works, awesome, we'll just push on and start into some of the terrain with it. Let's have a look and see if that has changed anything. I'll get, I'll empty the nozzle first. All right, so let's try the second mix. That to me looks a bit more red than the first test. And I think we're just gonna go with that. I quite like that look. So roughly a four to one mix. So the first thing I want to try it on is a piece of our broken terrain. Because this stuff's going to be quite dull anyway, what we could do is, for the buildings that aren't destroyed, is increase the mixture almost up to complete um, red, straight up. But I kind of like this now, just in case I'm not happy with it, I'm doing the ruins first. So the way to apply this is pretty simple, we just start airbrushing. Not bad, not bad. I actually quite like that. Let me get it back and get a bit more light onto there. So obviously with ghost tints, as they dry, you can put another layer on. And you can see it starts to increase the vibrancy and increase the color of the piece. So the lighter the, the coating is, the thinner that coat. The thinner that coat is, the lighter that coat will be. The more you go at it, the deeper and richer that colour becomes. The other advantage to using an ink-based sort of colouring is that it's maintaining that um, pre-shade. So you can see as it gets to the bottom area there, it's really starting to dull down and really holds that all that work that we've done in the airbrush previously. So what you end up getting is a very effective, nicely shaded, completed building or terrain piece in this case. And yeah, this is this is going to work, I think. So let's continue on the inner the inner wall here. Okay, I think that is starting to look pretty effective. And you can see just how nicely that, that retains the shading all through. So I think we've got a pretty effective scheme going on here. Have I missed anything? Yeah, maybe a little bit more along the, the bottom here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I like how the color is looking. Um, I'm going to push on. And if I come up with any other little interesting bits, I'll show you uh, as we're going along. But I think we've got the colour down spot on, so I'm going to push on with the ruins and see where we sit. With the red ghost tint down now, you can see what the building's looking like. And it's also had a matte coat, so I took it outside and sprayed it quickly with Army Paint or Anti Shine. Um, just to bring that gloss off. But, and it's looking pretty effective, I think. Uh, and what we want to do now is start to pick out other colours. Now because out of the range these are the more sort of industrial looking buildings, uh, I wanted to put a bit more silver and stuff onto them. Unlike some of the other buildings where it's basically just red and a few details here and there, I want this to look a bit more industrial. So what I'm doing is using some uh, Army Painter gun metal. I'm going to be picking out uh, certain areas. Now for this I'm actually using a dry brush because it's handy just to do it and the idea is just to pick out all this decking on the top here because I feel like it would it looks quite good as a separate color from the red and breaks it up a little bit too the red of course is still the main color and still very striking um, but we don't want it to be too overbearing on a table setup especially when we're using multiple buildings that have uh, the same finish to them, we'd want them to be broken up just a little bit. So, I'm just going to show you where I'm picking these areas out. And, uh, yeah, so just all along this decking here, just as quick as we can, just to get the base coat down. Probably quite rough looking 
but that'll be fine. There'll be other steps on top of it. It also feels like a separate part on this building as well because it has this little edge, sort of a gap around it too. Uh, and I thought, well, if I pick this out in a different colour, it will actually look like a completely different part that's been set on. Or is bolted on later, perhaps. Perhaps it's remove easily removable for maintenance, who knows. Something a lot of tank designers could really start to reimagine. Like, ease of maintenance, yeah, we could could probably do something about that. Let's go on to the other side and get this little piece too. Not worrying too much about my little sort of mistakes here and there. They'll be covered up uh, eventually too. So after the top decking, I'm going to pick out the windows as well because we have got one here and one here. Check that out. Like that, so nice and simple. And around the base of this tower as well, I'm just going to take and um, pick out uh, the stanchion as well. And <clears throat> I'll probably stop after that because I'll just add a few more details in later. Um, just don't go into the recesses, let that shading stay where it already is. See if I can center this in shot, the better for you. Okay, that'll do for the stanchion. Uh, round the back here, we have two storage containers. One of them is going to be silver, so I'm just going to pick it out. The other one is going to be a different colour, just to vary it up a bit. Okay. And we have two more pieces to do, so we have the door, which we'll just hit with silver too. I'll just double check that I've got everything that I need here covered uh, because there's areas that I can't see when I'm trying to hold it under camera. Okay, so that's the door. Final piece for the silver is this top piece of this storage tank. Now obviously this does come with another storage tank that's separate and when it's put together they'll both be the same. I'm going to be painting them identically. And it is strangely satisfying. Putting, <laughs> using a, a broad brush on something that's relatively flat and the details aren't too deeply cast into it because you just feel like you're making progress really, really quick. Okay, so that's that done. We'll now get to move on to our next colour and it's weapon bronze. So, I'll get some of that out on to what I'm constituting as a palette, which uh, is really not. But it keeps paint on it, and so I've been told that whatever keeps paint on it while you're using the paint is technically a palette. So I get to have that argument too. Wait. Uh, right. On the top here, we're going to be picking out these two pipes with our weapon bronze. And again, I'm not too concerned. Well, I'm generally not too not too concerned about leaving streaks or anything like that. So the paint supplied fairly quickly just because we want our terrain pieces to be finished and looking you know relatively good. There's a chance I'll also give this a bit of a silver dry brush just to uh, make it look a bit more being hit by light. Next bit I'm moving on to is this pipe down the back here, I'm just going to keep it the same colour. But I might just tidy that a little bit. So what I'll do at this point is just continue on with it, uh, putting the weapon bronze on. I'll also briefly discuss that the other storage tank on the back here, that will also be going weapon bronze. Those are the only areas on this piece of train where that colour is going to be present. 
When I come back, that'll be all done, and we'll be looking at adding some colour. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.